welcome to another class in Derech Hashem. We are in the second part of the book, beginning the first chapter for those of you at home. The, we ended chapter 5, right, the previous chapter, discussing the way that God relates to us, to his creatures. And I talked about that really we have two ways of relation, of relating to the world. One is from top to bottom, and one is from top, bottom to top, right? One from top to bottom, and one goes from the bottom all the way up. And we're going to get into more and more details of how those two relationships work, okay? The top to bottom means that it is run, God runs the world according to his will, and it is independent of anything down here. He simply wants to move the world, the universe, the land of Israel, whatever, the Jewish people, whatever he decides in his infinite wisdom to get from point A to point B in their moral development, spiritual development, physical, anything, then it simply happens. Okay? That's going from the top to the bottom. Going from the bottom to the top is solely dependent on our free will. That we make certain decisions, and those decisions affect the choices that we have, and those choices we make another choice, and those we have new choices, and so on and so forth. So we send messages upstairs, and hence the whole system has to react to what is happening, both for the good and for not so good. So now he's going to describe the, how does God know what's going on down here. Okay? This is called, in, in philosophy of religion, called divine providence. That God watches over the universe and guides it in some sort of a way. And the question is, what is the relationship between the guidance and human free will. So we've explained that yesterday, that God allows our free will to affect the way that he guides the universe. Yet there are consequences to our decisions and our actions, right? So if we need to get rewarded, the rewards come to us. When we need to get slapped on the wrist, then we get slapped on the wrist. Those are independent of our free will. It's not like we could say, listen, God, you know, I don't want a punishment. Uh, don't give it to me. Listen, you've earned it, you're getting it. And vice versa, if you deserve the reward, you're going to get the reward. Now, so somebody said, well, you know, I, I gave the example, if God wants to give you a million dollars, you're going to get the million dollars. She says, well, well, if it comes to me, I can always say no and give it to tzedakah. Of course. Of course. So maybe then God decides now you get two million. Right? What are you going to do now? Well, I'll give that away. It's a very interesting, very interesting topic. Okay. Chapter starts telling us that it's clear and known to everyone that all the creatures in the universe, whether they are in the spiritual world, whether they are in the physical world, everything that was created, right, were created by God's wisdom. Nothing in this world is a mistake. Not even you. Honest. God did not make a mistake in creating you. Yes, and he knows all your issues. He knows about your lack of concentration. He knows whatever you think is wrong with you. That you look in the mirror and you're like, God, why? He knows why. He, it wasn't an accident. It was not an accident. And the reason it is this way is because you have a way to perfect the world that you need this to have this. It's part of your superhero toolbox. Okay? So says the Ramchal, everything that is here has a purpose in the general tachlis, the reason for the existence of the universe. Everything here in this universe exists for a purpose. God did not do it for nothing. Even some planet or a star, that is, there is a reason for it being where it is and doing what it's doing. Okay? Everything has a purpose. 
There are no extra parts. Right? You ever get like you buy a, a, a game, you have extra game pieces, right? Just in case, or like you buy an IKEA. Oops, not allowed to say product. I'm kidding. You buy a product to assemble and they give you extra screws, right? Because they assume that you drill wrong, like me. So you, have, you can make it up and they give you extra glue, right? Because you only need this much, but they give you this Elmer's so that you can fix your mistakes. God doesn't need extra glue. Doesn't need extra glue. So he says everything in the universe, whether it's the laws of nature, Everything is according to the divine wisdom. Okay? And they were created as such from the get-go. Now, so therefore, since they were created for a specific purpose, and that God has a specific purpose for the universe, then every piece in the universe must fulfill its intended purpose for creation. Okay? Like a virus is fulfilling its purpose for creation. There's a reason why it's there. The germs, the cells, a protein. Whatever it is, whether it's the tiniest or we get to planet Earth, the uh, rings on Saturn, whatever it is, it is, plays a role and a function in God's purpose for the universe. No one is useless. I was told that no one is useless. And I said, really? I said, yeah, even you. You could always be a bad example. Ever heard that before, Bernie? What was it? That no one is useless. You could always be a bad example. Right? That's what I was told. Because I, I wasn't such a good student. You know, high school and just, you know, living in LA, beautiful weather. What are you gonna go to school every day? For what? What high school did you go? I went to Grant and then El Camino. Oh, how's the public? Hold on. No secret. It's like I want to hear his story. Not on tape. I'm kidding. We'll do a private, like you know, you know, like a talk show, you know. So, Binyamin will sit next to me and interview me. So, Rabbi, <coughs> how did it all start? You know, <laughs> well, I was laying at the beach. Yeah. You know, and you want to hear my story, right? I would love to. Yeah, but not now. Yeah. One day we'll sit down. We'll, you'll buy me a beer, which I don't drink, and you'll drink it, and I'll tell I you the story. Don't drink beer. Good for you. Good for you. What about you, Natana? Just hard liquor. What? Just hard liquor, not beer. Oh. Uh, uh, liquor. Whoa, okay, gosh. okay, okay, good. Drubbing Just alcohol. What? <laughs> what? Rubbing alcohol is more like it. You drink rubbing alcohol? <laughs> okay. So, everything that is created, since it has a purpose, and it has to fulfill that purpose, there must be a status or a situation, or a condition, where God pays attention and knows and guides creation towards its goal. You see how it follows? It's not set it and forget it. Remember those commercials? It's not one of those, bake a, a turkey in the oven, you set it and forget it. No. God is making sure that the universe progresses or moves to where it needs to go all the time. And in order to do that, he has to pay attention on every screwdriver, every screw and every nut and every aspect has to be watched over. Okay? Everyone's clear? Now, We talked about last chapter that there are two categories of created beings. Physical beings and spiritual beings. And in the spiritual beings, there's a category called incorporeal beings, called forces. 
It is through these forces that God watches over and guides everything that exists. Okay? These forces that are in the spiritual realm are, are all physical entities are connected to them. And it is through them that God affects us. Okay? Questions? Everybody is along with me? Okay. What didn't you understand? So the, there's three kinds you said? One is there are two kinds. They are physical and spiritual. Push this box out. Now in the spiritual, there are two, another two boxes. One box are called angels, and another box called incorporeal beings, non-physical beings, which are called forces. Kochot, in the language of the Ramchal. Kochot, forces. It is through these forces that he controls everything that is in the physical world. That's how he watches and guides, okay? It's through this, this, so all of this sort of now, you know, we put in the box, but in reality it's like this, okay? There's this chain going all the way to the top. It's not a visible chain. You can't see it. It's not like if you ding, 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 feel like a piece of string coming out of your <coughs> but that's the idea, Okay? Now, the, there is nothing in the physical world that doesn't have either a cause or is rooted in the category that we talked about of forces. There isn't anything in the physical world that is not either caused or they are its source. That's what the Ramchal says. Okay? So, what part of the world of existence is more real? The spiritual. Okay? But that is how the whole system works. And really, the human species is different from all other species on earth. Right? For example, cows as a species, or dolphins. What's your favorite animal, Jared? Probably dolphins. Dolphins. Yeah. Okay, what about great white sharks? No, no you don't like them? They're scary. They're scary. Bears. bears. Ooh, I love bears. So bear, the species of bears. So does God watch over bears in the same way that he watches over human beings? Yeah. No. Yes? No. no, you're saying no. Why not? And you say he should. Well, you could never say to God that he should, right? Because God is perfect, and whatever he does is the best. There isn't, you can't say, like, if I were God, I, I, would, you know, I would fix that. Remember, the whole system, if you change one thing, it'll throw everything out of whack. There's a reason why everything is the way it is. Yes, Ben? So, I think God uh, is not that... It, he should, but it's more, I think, that he has or has been watching over everything at the same time. A animals, um, humans, like plant growth, yeah, yeah, yeah. everything. All at the same time, simultaneously. Because For sure, but my question was, does he have the same providence over plant world and animal world that he has over human beings, or are they different? No, 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 no they're different. They're different. Humans Good. Have free will. Yeah. Ah. And that requires constant... On an individual basis. Yeah. Not on the species basis. But I mean... Like, you see the difference? Yeah. Even, even yeah, he overlooks everything. It's just, what? He overlooks everything. It's just with humans, it's, it's done differently. It's a, a rock. Okay, so we'll see. We'll get into it. Yeah. Humans are the only beings that have both <coughs> physical and spiritual. Correct. That are half and half, right? They are made up of an ashama and a soul, and a, and a goof, and a body. That's correct. Correct. Animals do not. So he, here now we're talking about, in the end of chapter 1, which believe it or not, with all the sidetrack and my stories, 
we finished. We're about to finish in about three sentences. The way that God watches over the human species as a whole is different than the way that he watches over you as an individual, Ben. Okay? So there are two types of providence. A providence on humans as a whole and the providence that God has over you as an individual. And it changes. It's not the same. So he says, since the human species is different from all other species, because not only does he have free will, but it also has the ability to act upon this free will. Without the ability to act, free will is, doesn't really mean a lot. Right? You have to have the ability to act on what you want to do. So we have the ability to either acquire perfection or completion, or detract from it. So we see that human beings are active and are not passive. In a sense that we can influence the world and be unaffected if we choose from what's happening around us. Right? Like if you ever and you remember your first you know school dance that you didn't want to dance and didn't matter what they would say to you, you wouldn't dance. You're like, no, thank you. No. Come on, come on, we're all doing it. Come on. No, no, just no. And, you know, I grew up at the time they just invented break dancing. Okay? <laughs> There's no way I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah, I had a friend that he would get like a, you know, like cardboard and put it on the corner and do spins, you know, we would wear jogging suits. You know, it's like, I didn't understand why, but we did it. Uh, see, you're safe. Yeah. But you missed the dance. I don't know. What? I don't yeah, I need to I still, you know, I, that was like torture. So, the Hashgacha, the providence, has to be different on human beings than it is for other species. Because God has to pay attention not only to our actions, but also to our speech, which we talked about yesterday. And also what? Our thoughts. Because our thoughts are regulated, at least some of them, by the commandments that, gave, that are in the Torah. So we gave yesterday some examples. What are some of the examples of commandments that have to do with our thinking? Don't steal. Don't believe in other gods. What else? Don't covet, remember? Coveting is all in here. It's in your mind. So God's providence, I mean, if a lion eats a gazelle, does it change the universe? As long as there are lions and as long as there is gazelles, probably not. But if a Jew thinks in his mind there is no God or another religion, that can affect the universe. That's the difference. Heavy, right? Just think about it. Rav Dessler says that every time we sin, it is as if we take God's head and stick it in the toilet and flush. Because we have a connection to God. We are connected to Him. So when we sin, we are pulling all of our connections with us. So it's like literally in the toilet. Plus it makes it better for the person. What? Plus it makes it better that can breathe once you flush. True. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> you don't want to flush, it's clean water after you flush. Where do you guys people, where do you people hang out? <laughs> Your head was flushed in the toilet? You flushed other kids in the toilet? They said, thank you for letting me breathe. Can I please have another? <laughs> Can you reflush? <laughs> what are you talking about? Ay, ay, ay. Let's keep going. 
See what you're missing when you show up at 3.30? So, the way that God watches over us is called measure for measure. Mida keneged mida. Sorry, individuals? Individuals. Mida keneged mida. Is that at any time that he watches over everyone as a whole? Like, but it also as a whole, as a, as a, as, you know, the Rambam explains this, as a, as a town, right, as a village, as a town, as a state, as a country, as a, as a world, as a region, all of it is sort of like, uh, you know, in those little cups, you know, that you're like a little babushka, right, there's the world, and then there's a little, then the country, and da, 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 all the way till you get to you. Yeah, yeah, my, my question is, is like, like during a certain holiday, like whenever, like almost the entirety of the Jewish, the religious Jewish nation, uh, like gets together, and, like pray yeah. together, like Yom Kippur. Like, yeah. Does he ever like judges not as individuals but as a whole nation? It does as both, but it's as as so individuals. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I, because I could say, <laughs> why is it my fault that this guy is, is you know is breaking shabbos? What do you want me to well, do? Well, it could be that it's your fault because you weren't. Maybe he doesn't know that it's Shabbos and you weren't informing him. Or how does he not know? I'm banging on his car in the middle of the street. Shabbos, Shabbos. Well, then you're doing what, what you're supposed to. Do. But I mean, like, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I was on the wind, you know, on the shield. Eh? Okay. So that's the end of chapter one. He talks about that really God pays attention in the, about human beings on every single one of us. And he knows what you're doing. He knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're saying. And you're judged for it. You're judged for it. And people say, well, I I don't want that. It's not about what what you you want. That's how the world is run. You want to know the truth? Or do you want me to send you, you know, sell you fairy tales? Truth is that God operates the universe based on providence. And providence is the way that he watches over his creatures. And he watches over human beings, not only as a species, but on every single individual. Because he gave this individual free will. Yes, Jared? You said that you're judged on, God judges you uh, based on different things, including what you think. Yes. I mean, sometimes it seems like you don't have control over what you think. I mean, something just sort of pops into your head. So, that, unpop it. Yeah, so the split instant of the popping, you're not judged, and then afterwards, if you keep thinking about it, you are? I, mean, I, don't, I don't know exactly. It's a good question. It's a good question, and it's the question is, you know, there's, there's a, uh, a famous, uh, one of the leading rabbis passed away about a decade ago or so, said that one day he was... Um, walking in Machana Yehuda, you know, in the shuk, and fell two pounds against his chest. And he's like, whoa, whoa. And then he realized he was davening. He's in, in his mind, he was in somewhere in Machana Yehuda, but really he was davening. He just was out of it. And yeah, so of course, there is where we should be and what we should strive for. And God, one second, and God knows where your level, what your level, where you, where you are. He wants you to continue to grow and improve and get better. So, you know, and your judgment is based on that. You know, if you're here and you're now you're here, but you have thoughts and you have issues, then okay, he takes it into account. If you're here and now you're down here, then you also have to take it into account. Yes, Natana. He was, he was, he, in his mind, he was there. He, he was there, but he was in the shul. But he was like thinking, I have to buy this, I have to go. And then all of a sudden, he, you know, it came to, you know, doing this. And then like, oh, oh he whoa. Was Why? No, he wasn't Sephardi. So that's the, uh, it's a very, very uh, interesting and deep idea of the way that God watches over uh, each and every one of us. And we know that there is, right, on Rosh Hashanah, there is an accounting. But the accounting is not over. And there is accounting when we die. Right? We reach 120 and then there is an accounting. 
right? There's a judgment. It's called din. And then there's an accounting that's called cheshbon. What's the difference between the two? Why is there two din and cheshbon? Din and cheshbon. Din is the judgment based on your actions. The cheshbon, the accounting, is your influence on others. Did you influence, were you a positive influence in the world? Did you help people become better, more connected, more spiritual? Or did you not? Did you take them, did you make it worse? And then a person, whenever they, on the anniversary of their death, it's called Yurtzeit, they are judged again. Every year. Why? Because in their accounting, it changes the equation. Right? Because when somebody passes away, and let's say they taught, and that person taught somebody else, and that somebody else, there are more students, so then the person gets a reward for that. Mm -hmm. So even after they die? Even after we die, we still have a positive effect. Of course. But I mean, like, even after we die, we're still being accounted for? Yeah. Because your actions continue. You're going to have, Bezat Hashem, God willing, you're going to have children, and your children are going to do... Right, mitzvahs, and because of your educating them and raising them, and when even when they are, you know, when they are gone and they have grandchildren, and you still get credit for that, and vice versa, God forbid, if you were a negative influence in the world, we have to be very, very careful and think about the implications of what we do, what we say, and what we think. Yes. So if you give, like, if you me, give, if someone, if one. Give, give tzedakah to somebody. Yes. And that person uses that tzedakah that you gave to give tzedakah to another person. Do you get schutz for that? Exactly? You get schar. You get a reward. Yeah. Even after you're, so is it like you're doing the mitzvah at, even after you're, even yeah. after you're dead? Yeah. Of course. So let's say if you leave, you let's say you, yeah. you, made, you made a million dollars. And you say you come and then in your will you leave it to Orson now. Okay? And the yeshiva then now you know, is able to do more shiuri, more classes, more this, more that. You get, you get these rewards. You don't get the, the, the mitzvah. You get the schar. So all of a sudden, they call you to, you know, you were in 100 in line at the buffet, now you move to 50. Then you're to 25, and then you're, you know, you're behind Moshe Rabbeinu. Asking, who's the mashgiach here? <laughs> <You know? laughs> right? What? What? You zoned out? I zoned out for like a minute. Oh, it's okay. It's Read my notes. Oh, you oh, see? Yeah, but don't, when he says that I said something, don't trust him. Ask me, did you say that? Or did it mean what you said? Did it? I remember even the university people always say to me, you know, well, you said, and I said, no. Well, that's what I heard, or that's what I wrote it down. You can write down whatever you want. That's not what I said. Did you let people record you? No. Where are they? Nope. Um, how does one know the um, magnitude of the mitzvah that they do? For instance, uh, helping someone whose car broke down is good as wearing a seat seat? Or what? It's a big, it's a, you're asking a very, very big question. It's a very important question. Um, I, I can't answer it fully at this forum or at this time, but I would say there are sort of two ways of answering the question without answering. One is that the Rambam says in the Mishnah Torah that since we don't know the schar mitzvah, we don't know what the reward is, so we should look at every mitzvah as important. Because we don't know to, to do you know, this chashba. On the other hand, as you know, there are some mitzvahs that you perform all the time, regardless. So since those you're doing every instant, they, you know, it's a big rewards. And there are some that the Torah tells you that those are sort of very special mitzvahs with big rewards. So although you might not be able to know, um, there are some hints in the Torah. But, yeah, but in a sense what we're supposed to do is do, perform every mitzvah that we are able to do. Every mitzvah that comes to us, we should grab onto it and do it. Right? So you have a mitzvah to learn Torah, 
You know, you put on your kippah, you come to class, you learn Torah. You know, you have a, uh, somebody says, hey, you know, there's a minion, like, go, I'll go put on tefillin, you know, boom, you get the credit. The idea is that when you have a mitzvah before you, you should seize the opportunity. Carpe diem, right? Seize the carp. All right, let's stop here. Let the folks get ready for mincha. Mincha is promptly at 345.